right. I think that's my cue to start. Um, thanks for joining us, everyone. We have a full house. Uh, everybody wants to know about the state of DAOs in 2023, deep in crypto winter. Um, so we'll, we'll get right into it. Um, I have an illustrious panel. I should say that I've known a lot of these folks for quite a while, and I'm a member of several of these DAOs. So uh, what I say is not investment He's going to pump his bags right now. Buy all these tokens. Um, <laughs> Jess Loss, uh, Seed Club instigator, also among the tallest people in crypto. You can't tell he's sitting on stage. Uh, Raihan from FWB, F, uh, friends with benefits, bracket, not a sex thing. That's what we, that was a disclaimer we used to always have to yes. say in, in the early days. Uh, and Jeff from Jumpers Tweeting. All right. So, I guess let's let's level set with the with the crowd here. So, how many people here are members of DAOs? Raise your hand. All right, wow, not very bad, DAO okay. native. This is like sixty-ish yeah. percent, you would say. Yeah. Seventy. All right. So everyone here is deep in the weeds. So we will uh, set our questions um, accordingly. I, I thought maybe we could start with uh, some quite granular things. So like you know DAO ops funding, treasury, these kind of things. And then we'll zoom out into the more, you know, macro things, right? So, you know, I was reading this report from um, Masari, which is a research uh, uh, platform, and they did a thing, they looked at 10 big DAOs, and they said, you know, these DAOs spent 100 million on internal uh, labor in 2022. So paying DAO contributors 100 million. Uh, and I'm kind of wondering, you know, for each of your groups, um, not how much you spent, but actually how do you organize uh, your, your groups, right? Like originally we had like DAO working groups, which turned into, you know, tons of different uh, Discord channels. Um, so is that still the way you all organize your groups or is there some other structure that is uh, emerging? Yeah, that's a great question. I think like the fundamental question that most of these organizations are asking is what are we actually building and, and where's the long-term value and so I think there was a, a, a misstep by many of them I think we, we fell down that path as well where uh, working groups or, or doing the work became the focus rather than creating the outcome uh, I think that's maybe the, the core thesis of that piece that you're, you're referencing and so I think uh, a lot of the changes that we've seen over the last little while are Focus mostly on that. What, what is the thing that we need to go build that will create long-term value? And then how do we, how should we structure ourselves around that? And I think a lot of teams find that doing that when you have 20, 30, 40, 50, 1,000 contributors can be very challenging. And so I think like, there's some pretty tectonic shifts in how we go about building DAOs that are going to uh, start to, to raise their heads as we see new teams coming at these problems in, in new ways over the next few years. Gotcha. Uh, Raihan, you want to take a crack? I think for us, what was becoming really interesting, well, not just for FWB, but across the board, you're really balancing kind of the native token for the project, and then also balancing whether it's ETH or USDC, you know, kind of a more stable currency. And I think that second part was very shocking for a lot of DAOs. Um, it was definitely shocking for us to a degree to understand that like, hey, we kind of have to run this like a business and we have runway and we have kind of capital expenditures, yada, 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 and I can go full MBA mode about this, but I won't. Um, and, you know, right? Um, and I think that becomes very interesting because then you have to kind of think about the business side and, and kind of the, the work for hire side, the, the compensation side. If this was like an OG DAO, like right after the hack and all that, maybe it's just people in Telegram being like, hey, we're trading this ERC-20 back and forth, but all of a sudden, you have external funding, you have real stakes, you have people whose, um, whose rent and food on the table depend on their work in the DAO. And it was very interesting to kind of view that shift in general. And I think what happened was, I mean, especially in the last six, eight months, you have a real tightening of the belt, not because of a downturn just, but because people suddenly start to realize like, all right, cool, like this is the rate of work per token, this is the rate of work per hour, what have you. And it suddenly became a real legit conversation as opposed to magic internet money. I'll sort of give uh, a, a metaphor here. In terms of how I see, uh, well, at least how Jump is organizing. There we go. How Jump is organizing itself, but I think it's relevant to just about any DAO. You just take the human body, the information part, so like the brain, 
that's where you're trying to get everybody involved, sharing as much information as possible, as quickly as possible, as often as possible. And that's sort of like where everybody's kind of pitching in. And then you go out and you've got like the hand and it's like, that's a small team that does what the hand should do. And so you just kind of think about that. Like that's the spectrum. That's, that's what you want to achieve within a DAO and that coordination is at that information layer. How do you just like speed that up and get everybody participating and sharing that information? And then you have these body parts that go off and do very specific things, smaller teams. Gotcha, gotcha. And, um, you know, I think, Raihan, you were talking about the shift, right? Um, I'm just curious, like, did you see, for example, a change in the types of contributors that you, that were, you were seeing coming through the DAO, or perhaps a change in the scope of what they were doing? I think, well, A, yes, without a doubt. But I also think there's kind of a shift in semantics as well, that a lot of people are now starting to come to terms with the fact that DAOs can be as tiny as you know, we're going to work on X project together, we're going to put out an album, we're going to buy the constitution, you know, we're going to work with artists, what have you, all the way up to, you know, we're just a bunch of developers, shout out to developer DAO, we're just a bunch of designers, shout out to Vector, you know. And as the scope increases, it's more nebulous, and I think what happens is people raise their hands to be like, I'd like to work here, I'd like to contribute here. And you know, we saw that with FWB as well. A lot of people in their applications, uh, shout out to everyone who's a member here, would be like, hey, here's how I can contribute. I'm like, nah, you just need to hang out. You know, it's, it's not that serious. But yeah, we've definitely seen a really clear specificity with how people show up, and we've seen a specificity in terms of the organizations. And hopefully, what I, what I hope, is that a lot of these DAOs also start to say there's a time-bound goal here that, yo, we formed for this goal, and once this goal is achieved, we have dissolved. Um, and that becomes super different, in my opinion, from the way like a C Corp is run. Jess? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm all about DAOs as institutions. I think the lasting forever is the, the cool thing. Um, and yeah, I think the, the, the big shift, I think we need to, to look at these organizations through is that people don't want jobs. We don't want to have to go work, and I think like looking at DAOs as like the evolution of a, a corporation. So here's a new job you can have to come do. I think is missing a big opportunity. Uh, I'm telling you, yeah. I think that DAOs that are most exciting and will be most exciting in the, in the near future are ones that are structured more as consumer products. They're ways for you to be a part of a community, to be part of things that you would not be able to do on your own. Um, you know, buy a sports team, for instance, and to see what being a fan owner looks like. It's you know uh, I think the, the archive team was here yesterday talking about curating a, an internet um, museum. Things like that I think are, are far more compelling. And so what you'll see is there will be these smaller teams that are working for the DAO that are building these processes, building these consumer products, building the experiences that people come enjoy. But the vast majority, 99% of people, will be closer to vibing than to working. And I think that's a, a good thing. I think that's what most people want. And I think the more that we can sort of run at that as the core product of DAOs, the better it will be. Jeff, anything to add on that? No, let's keep going. All right. Um, you, Jess, you touched on uh, consumer, uh, consumer crypto, and you know, that's kind of the seed club um, focus now, right? Consumer crypto. Um, we have funds that focus on that, like variant. Um, what is the role of a DAO in, in consumer crypto? Is it like uh, building products? Is it like helping onboard people to products that exist? Is it recruiting people to work? Yeah, I, I think building a product is a very hard thing to do as a DAO. Uh, you know, it requires a lot of decisions, um, some strong opinions, um, and doing that as you know a, a consensus project, I think, is very unlikely to result in, in valuable things being created. Um, so I think where DAOs can come in is in, in the funding, in the supporting, in the, the that go to market. You know, like the, we're doing some fun things with Friends with Benefits this summer, the idea of being able to come and co-produce an event that brings our communities together to create a platform for uh, the, the amazing teams that we work with, the entrepreneurs that we had, hope to have a chance to work with in the future. Um, yeah, I think it just becomes super compelling that way. And so if we think about the, the engines that we want to build in the future, it's how do we get capital into teams? How do we bring the folks who have the, the experience in building these types of products to lean in on these with, with these teams? And how do we help them go from zero to one or one to 100 in a, in a faster way? And I think DAOs 
even through the consumer product lens, that's how we view C-Club through, um, can, can really do that better than most other organizational structures. There's like, a, the goal there to get to is this like flow state of a very fast feedback loop between the 99% that are vibing and maybe that core product and then the interaction between those two and a really quick feedback loop. That, like, that's the opportunity, right? And ownership and tokens and these incentive models help create that in a new way. Yeah, I think people just want to come and be useful and helpful and a part of something early. And so like, just creating, it's a hard thing to do, but creating pathways for that to happen uh, is not rocket appliances. It's a Discord channel sometimes. We're over Discord though, right? Yeah. Are we're we? back to Telegram. Back to yeah, Telegram. Yeah, we are. I think so. Oh, That's the thing. 2023 is Telegram. Uh, Discord <laughs> was 2022. Um, you know, I think that's really interesting. I, and I kind of wonder if there's also an interesting dividing line here between sort of things that are on chain or crypto native and like real world assets, right? Which is kind of the, the big thing in DeFi now. Yeah. Um, and maybe DAOs play a role in coordinating or bridging those two things. Um, it's a bit like, you know, you think about like early, you know, web one, right? And I always quote this paper, like, you know, uh, Tiziana Terranova, Terranova wrote this paper called Free Labor back in uh, 1999. And it's all about early, you know, AOL uh, chat group moderators. And they devoted their lives to moderating these huge chat groups. And you kind of have that same behavior today with, you know, subreddit moderators, for example. It's a volunteer role. Um, but then when you have things that are on-chain, including on-chain payments and money, um, you can actually start to build a lot of new behaviors and frameworks and organizations on top of that. So I wonder if that's kind of, you know, this bridging role is, is part of uh, what, what DAOs are occupying right now. I actually think, yeah, A, I agree with that kind of thesis there, that DAOs are kind of your accreditation model for people doing the work. Um, the panel I was on yesterday with some very amazing ladies, we are talking about the fact that in DAOs, you don't necessarily need to have a resume. You can literally show up with the Dune Analytics dashboard. You can show up with your work on chain and say, yo, this is what I did, and here's what I'd like to keep doing. Um, you know, Lee Jin talks a lot about like the creator economy in DAOs in the sense that you know, if you're sick of your day job, you could probably just keep putting up freelance work in a way, and then having your DAO be the structure for that freelance work. I think that's going to be very valuable as we kind of approach this realm of LLMs and the way I see it, potentially DAOs being stewards of individual LLMs. Like, yes, I know DAOs kind of fell off in the last year, but we're going to be back. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's. I think it's important to sort of think about timeframes in, in these things because there's a ton of excitement around reputation or uh, you know the idea of being able to capture one's value on chain, but. Human beings are very nuanced, and you know there's still a ton of human-to-human -human connection that are happening in these organizations. And the likelihood of uh, you know someone wanting to hire somebody purely just because of something they did on chain, I think is it's higher than it has been in the past. But I think there's still a huge gulf to go between that. And so I think I'm interested in you know where that can be sort of a, a later can augment um, discoverability. I think it's worth scale comes from in these organizations, but I think we need to be thoughtful about how fast that comes. Maybe it comes a lot faster as AI starts to step up and you know, AI dial probably the next token that you should pump next to, to Pepe, but. <laughs> AI dial. Yeah, free business idea for anyone who's go. here right now. We're on stage, so we can't build it. You have 30 minutes. We'll provide liquidity. Um, so, you know, you know uh, Ryan, you, you mentioned, you know, sort of crypto winter a little bit. Um, you know, how are DAOs, or, or maybe how are your own DAOs weathering this, this particular, uh, these particular market conditions? It's, it's just been a great time to build. It's, it's just fun. Hell like, yeah. It's gotten like a little quiet, a little calm, and then it's just incredible building that's happening. Yeah, I think the nature of people showing up in the space has been super different and, you know, additive as opposed to just uh, being staticky. I think that's been very cool. I think it's been giving us a little bit of time and mental space to work on the stuff we've been meaning to work on for about a year and a half now where it's like, okay, cool. Like, OMG, membership levels are down, but it's like, who cares? People who are still here are, like, down for it. Yeah. Um, for us, and I know Jess and I have talked about this a lot, um, the one really cool thing about DAOs and crypto is that 
those of us on stage, those of us in this room are here because we believe in the tech and it uh, unlocks shit that was impossible three to five years ago. And so we're still in here, we're still building, we're still doing it. Yeah, I, I wonder when I listen to that, like Stockholm Syndrome a little bit? No. No? Okay. You know, I mean, to be, to be fair, my, my day job is at one of the largest media corporations <laughs> in the world. Yeah. So, okay. you know, crypto is yeah. still freedom in that sense. Yeah, and I, I agree. I think like the, you know, the, the I heard a great saying where the bear markets are for building leverage and bull markets are for building scale. I think building leverage is, is what most you know DAOs that are in, in strong positions today are, are focused on doing. That comes from building relationships and uh, getting your taxes in order. Um, you know, figuring out how to make sure that you're paying people properly. All the fun things that were easy to sort of gloss over as magic internet money was was uh, the name of the game. Um, so you know, I think people here. The feeling here at consensus this year compared to last year, I think, is meaningfully different, and I think has so many positives to it. Where and my guess is that you'll meet somebody here today or, or over the last week that you will go build something with in the future, or who will introduce you to a new and exciting thing. I have fond memories of consensus 2018. Um, last year was kind of crazy. So for anybody who's in a place, and, and I count myself very privileged, we're in a wonderful position at C Club to continue to build, regardless of what the market throws at us for for a number of years to come, and we're going to take advantage of that. Thinking back, I think I met all of you in 2019, 2020, yeah, yeah. which was uh, the last time we were down bad. So, <laughs> you know, we're here. We're here for all the internet friends we make. There, there, I'll, I'll add one more thing. There's like two ends of the spectrum, and both are very positive. When a few years ago, when we we're saying what is a DAO, here we're saying state of DAOs. But a few yeah. years ago, it's just what is a DAO. Yeah. And the craziness of of the bull run was awesome because it created so many inspiring moments, like Constitution DAO. Yeah. It was just like, that was magic, and that all inspired us to go do things. And then fast forward, what was it? A month ago, Link Style actually purchased a golf course. Huge celebratory moment. It's like, are DAOs real? Yes. <laughs> like, look at what just happened. Both very inspiring in two totally different ways. I think on a regulatory front as well, sorry, I said the R word. Um, the one thing that's made DAOs absolutely crack in the last, I'd say, eight months is the fact that uh, municipalities, governments, uh, financial institutions are finally waking up to the fact that, like, hey, we're here, we exist, and here's how we can work with you guys and make sure that, like, you're not just collecting, again, magic internet money. You can convert that into real dollars. You can work with real vendors, et cetera. So in that sense, again, the future does feel kind of bright in that regard. Um, oh, you know, in the spirit of DAOs, I want to get the audience involved. You guys think of questions while I do a quick fire round here of like, you know, what was the one, I guess, landmark thing or significant thing that happened in the last 12 months? And what do you think is going to happen in the next uh, 12 months in, in DAOs? Jess. Well, I mean, I think there's a, a <laughs> FDX crash in the US, in USDC depegged, and I uh, maintain sanity through both of them somehow, I think. So for me personally, I think that's a huge win. Shout out to everybody else who managed to survive as well. We made it. I, I mean, I think that, that sort of is a, a, a meaningful shift. We start to feel like these downward swings in momentum and, and interest and narratives. And I feel like those both felt like real sol strong, solid ground that we kind of bounced off of. And I think so much of what we're doing here is still very narrative driven and meme driven. And I think those are, uh, yeah, stressful but in important moments. The big thing for me, I think, was actually Reddit going into NFTs, which I kind of interesting because obviously, look, uh, those of us who are in the Web3 and crypto space, we we're just like, yo, Discord sucks, Telegram sucks. And all of a sudden, Reddit's like, hey, you guys can hang, uh, you can hang out here and it's not as scary, it's not as weird. And I think that has changed um, the way media institutions look at Web3, that has in uh, changed how DAOs look at Web3 and how we kind of coalesce to get stuff done. That's been a definite high point. Um, in terms of where we're going, I already hinted at this. I think that, again, if uh, LLMs and AI models can transact with money, transacting with Ethereum is easier than transacting with USDC. So for the next year, I think that will be kind of a huge focus across the board. And I'm really interested in seeing how that kind of manifests. So when I met all these guys, the conversation was, the brands are coming. 2019, 2020, um, you know, talking to my network in 2020, you talk about NFTs and DAOs and Web3, there was zero awareness among enterprise brands and agencies. I'm talking just zero. I found Jess on Twitter when 
I had social listening software, and there were 14 mentions of social tokens a month, and he was like 12 of them. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, we have this perspective of just like absolutely zero awareness to what was it last week? Nike dot swoosh holders, 100,000 NFTs airdropped over the course of 11 hours. And so we talk about some of these big things in crypto and Web3 of like, there's a UX problem. <clears throat> Sorry, there's a, there's a perception problem. Well, if there's one thing we know that these incredible brands are great at, it's changing perceptions, it's consumer experiences. And then when you think about the reach of these brands, it's like, in this room, how many people has ever bought Nike? Raise your hand. Some sort of Nike product. Ever right? in your life. Yeah, right. it's everyone. Great. It's everyone. Same with Starbucks. So there's like five to ten brands that when they get on board, and they are, they're launching all of these things, they're going to bring everybody into the space. And then what does that mean for DAOs? It means people have been educated. They've done these, they, they've done these onboarding things, and then they're going to start to find these niche communities and they're just gonna, and then things are just gonna get wild really fast, like really fast. I love that because I, I like that the brands are here. I was sitting around a table with a bunch of brands yesterday, and I guarantee you that is not where the most interesting things are gonna come from. There's somebody sitting in here or in some back corner of the room here who's building something on all the infrastructure that's been developed over the last two years and all the lessons that we've learned around how to distribute tokens. It's gonna launch something and it's gonna look super weird to most of you, and you're gonna. You know, look at it like you probably looked at the Chromie squiggle back in the day and were like, what the hell is that? And then six months later, it's going to be the biggest thing and you're going to go, how the hell did I miss that? And I think that's the most exciting opportunity that's happening in crypto today is we're starting to see new innovators actually play with these tools in new ways, not just copy paste what's been happening over the last two years. I agree, brands are coming. They all want to do loyalty points. We'll go on the record again and say loyalty points are not the thing that is going to make crypto interesting no, no, to most people. I agree with that. And uh, I'm looking forward to, so if you're building anything interesting in the consumer crypto space, all the VCs are out looking at infrastructure, we're very excited to be supporting teams. I, I want to bring that together. It's the combination of the brands get the masses ready mm -hmm. for that. That's the point that I was trying to make. It's not that I it's like I just try to fight just, Jeff whenever I can. So. <laughs> it's <laughs> that Battle these the brands, beans. it's like, these brands are getting the masses ready for that crazy, awesome thing. And it's that thing is gonna have the potential to scale in a way because of some of this foundational education and work we, that has been done. We'll be, we're great partners. We should go, we'll go on, <laughs> yeah. on tour. I, I kind of view it the way that, you know, the, the instruments are now being made, right? Like if anyone plays guitar, this is like Fender and Gibson coming to market and, you know, we're in the business of selling instruments, but the people who are making the art and the music are just picking up those toys and having fun with it. And we're gonna get the, we're gonna see the germination of that probably, you know, relatively shortly. I would say another thing to credit of brands is, I think the three of us have watched brands jump into the space in the last year, um, and actually in the last 18 months, two years. And the brands that are killing it today are the ones that shut up in the last two years. They didn't say shit. They were just like, yo, we're gonna wait, we're gonna see how this works, and now you have Swoosh, and now you have Starbucks, and now you have you know, Polygon's unstoppable BD team shaking hands with all these folks and, and making that shit work. Um, the people who did it first you know, fell flat on their faces. The people who are doing it now are gonna bring in that next generation of folks, not looking at crypto as a money thing, but looking at crypto as kind of the next version of the internet. I don't know about you guys, but the only virtual money I care about is my Tesco club card points, so... <laughs> That's how you know he's not American, folks. All right, any questions from, from, from the room? Someone at the back? I think you have to shout it. I kind of want to get y'all's feedback on uh, what, um, what you guys think about initiative-driven knowledge sharing, applying a token for that, and even how NFTs might even uh, factor into all that within a DAO. Um, obviously, I'm extremely biased. Um, the dudes who run Taika are 
close personal friends. FWB is this thing that I help run. Um, I love everyone in FWB. Um, what I think was really fucking cool about that, you know, and it's not just FWB, it's leisure, it's um, vacation, it's a bunch of folks who are taking the knowledge of the herd, you know, in pre, pre-Web 2 days, we'd have focus groups and, and other boring things like that, and DAOs are phenomenally more iterative, phenomenally more interesting, and like, they're kind of a full contact sport of product development. Um, I'm sure, Jeff, you've probably seen that with Jump as well, right? That comes up with the way we look at go to market, the way we look at branding, the way we look at the product direction and stuff like that. And that kind of forces you know those of us on stage, those of you in this room, to really think about um, going beyond um, you know two really tall white dudes and myself who's not as tall and making crypto as accessible as possible because we aren't just looking at these folks as wallet holders. We're looking at them as really smart individuals who are part of a hive mind. Um, this is only going to continue in my opinion. I think there's a whole lot of innovation to be had between like the initiative and the reward and how we do those rewards. I think it's uh, you know a thing that uh, when you look at maybe data being valuable and, and how much your data is valuable to, to a platform like Facebook, you know, I don't think them giving me $15 is going to be worth me purposely giving them as much information as I actually do by weirdly still using that product. But I do think there's like a lot of interesting product experiences that are built on top of that type of thing that actually we're very willing to to sign up. So whether that's something like a honey or okay, I need to know what's going on in my neighborhood group. So I'm on Facebook. Don't don't kill me, but I'm still there. And so I, I think looking at, at what teams like Blur are doing with sort of variable rewards, I think you can start to see like a really early beginning of how we might unlock more of that value because they, right now it's very difficult to justify somebody leaning in, figuring out how to actually allocate that the value, especially at such an early stage when there's such an uncertain outcome. And so there's a weird set of math that's going on when you say, come and hang out and I'll give you one FWB to come in and fill out the survey. Not super cool, but you know the accrual of reputation or points or access and then some variable reward in the future, maybe that's cool. I think there's a lot of room for innovation there. It, al it, also, goes, it also goes back to what you said in the beginning, which is DAOs starting to actually figure out what is the thing they want to do. Right, because it, in a couple years ago, when we we're having these panels, it was just like, "What is a DAO?" And we're vibing, and we're coming together, and we're having a lot of conversations, and we're just kind of spitballing. It was really hard to figure out the reward mechanics until you have like the time-based goal, right? The the things that started this conversation. It's yeah. really hard to figure out the reward mechanics and to iterate there until you have those goals and those structures of like, what is it you want to do? I was uh, listening to a panel with some uh, game developers, uh, game studios yesterday, and they were talking about, you know, why do gamers hate crypto so much? And I've seen this firsthand. I've been to a gaming conference, and they love everything except when, you know, the person on stage mentions crypto, spontaneous booing, right? Um, and, the, and the game producer people were saying, like, yeah, it's kind of weird because, you know, when we ask the gamers to pay us money for stuff, they're happy. They pay yeah. us money. Yeah. But then we say we're going to pay them money. They're not happy. <laughs> they immediately reject it, you know? I think it's a phrasing thing. I think for a lot of game devs, it's looking at kind of a crypto as OMG is taking our jobs when reality, it isn't. It's not adversarial like that. Um, one other thing I want to say, actually, to the point of game devs and Jeff, to your point, and actually Jeff, to your point, is that these kind of token-based incentives have forced, uh, hopefully, a traditional company to look at what they do as closer to gaming as opposed to running like a C-Corp or a business. Um, for those of us who are kind of riding those like MBA and game dev and crypto rails at the same time, it allows us to make very fun decisions where it's like, yo, the goal is to, I don't know, boost quarter over quarter profits. No, fuck that. Like our goal is to develop like two versions of a drink and see which one wins. You know, that's not a way a business normally thinks. I think that's going to be cool. It's going to see more of that. I think Blur is, again, a great example of thinking about a, a KPI and just absolutely ripping that idea to shreds. Stage manager has said we got to go, but there's 10 seconds left. Any quick fire, one word replies. Buy a chromie swiggle. <laughs> that, was, that was for Jess. I don't know, how did, oh, sure, okay. Oh, well, I want to say thank you. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're wonderful people, you're wonderful people, you're wonderful people. You, 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 you. you.